Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Enderall. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we have... Uh, we are detected by rats, apparently. I'm okay with being detected by rats. Th I didn't even shoot you, guy. What, what's... you need to get a better uh, hitbox. Uh, and we have people that are really upset that we're here. They're in there somewhere. Uh, I mean, if they... If they should be upset that I'm here. I steal everything. They, they don't know that, but, you know, they're not wrong. Is what I'm saying. They're not wrong in being upset. Also, I killed chickens. Is that a chicken that has been killed by me? Mm hmm. I mean, I assume. That's another chicken over there. They're not chickens, they're fire flinches. Yeah, what a finch is? I don't know, I think it's the name of a person. So that person over there, really, really mad that we're here. I'm not even gonna give them a chance. Because they're a wild mage. And they have fireballs. That they shoot at me. Fortunately, I seem to be in a sort of a high area. So this is going really well. How'd you manage to miss all of those? Shoot at the floor! This guy's never played Quake. Or Unreal Tournament, for that matter. Or uh, Team Fortress. Or any other game, really, that has rockets. Because the same the strategy is always the same. So this jerk was here. As soon as he saw me, he just sad mean things about me and said oh i can't believe things and all whatever and uh and i fled and then we found some terrible animals that uh, we'll get to see again i'm sure uh we had to fight them oh and we got a drill box okay immediately break i'm good with that that was because of all uh, of the last drill box that i opened got the thing very uh Bolt, no, oh, I think, no, that's the Brave Hunter. 14% more damage. Mm, I don't know what my amulet currently is. Amulet of the Brave Hunter. I have three of those. Cannot wear them all. It would just, it'd be cool if you could. It's like they could add so many systems to the game. Like, so many. Just add complexity. Add complexity to your game. And just, like, there's no reason not to. I mean, there is one reason. If you're not very good at designing a, uh, an interface, then complexity is really bad. I mean, it can be really bad. Depends on the sort of on the genre, I suppose. If you're making a, a 4x game, yeah, well, you should have seen some of the interfaces that I've seen for 4x games. Uh, that can be kind of a yeah. That's kind of a problem here. I'm gonna have to do this for you, sir. So you're gonna net need to be shot. Multiple times, so I can figure out. Are you still a little damaging me? This is bad. Hi. Yeah. I said bye, cruel world there. Okay. Each time I need to use the interface is just oh, the, not the interface. The um, the menus. They're they're complex. I they're they're not complex. They're uh. I was thinking of the co the complex thing that I was saying for. It's not designed for a mouse. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So complexity is always good, and I was thinking, how about using like maybe allowing you to use a certain amount of weight for the amulets, and you have weightier amulets. Uh, like imagine you could wear five pounds worth of amulets, and you have amulets that are really really light. Okay, hopefully you are not damaging me. That other guy is not dead yet? Holy crap, man. You're dead now. I am taking damage. Oh, this is nonsense. No, I'm not taking damage. What? No, what? There it is. I was taking damage just the same rate as I was if the t time was stopped. That's not right. That is not right. Screw you. Screw you, bugs in the game. I fix you. Bugs in the game. Always fixed by TGM and TCL. Ding! <laughs> Solution for everything, actually. It's fantastic. It's really, really great. But yeah, like, so you could, you could, it, this is me, sort of coming up with, with crap. Uh, you could use up to five pounds worth of amulets. Ooh, my cheese wheel. It's the best wheel. Um, and, but, 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 uh, some... Oh, there's the big guys that I was talking about before. Some effects stacked. 
Oh, he sees me. He knows I'm here. He friends. Yeah, he's curious. Does he actually, does he have an AI that's curious? Yeah. He's curious, it's fine. Um, and some, some effects would stack, others would cancel each other out. Like for example, let's say that d bow damage would, would stack, but, um, but if you added any defensive spell, like it, it'd need to be all trial and error, right? That, that could be a cool thing. You don't need to tell the players what's going on. I mean, it's trial and error. As long as you clearly communicate what happens. So when you equip... What? Oh, no. I, I feared. Um, that was 2% right off the bat. That's just the worst. These things are terrible. I mean, I need to go in there. What is this? What is that? Oh, it's, it's that other soil elemental. I want to go in there. I have Ambrosia. I'm good. So this is a little valley. Okay. What is in here? Good stuff. And Boots of Righteous Path. I actually don't need that. So let's leave them over here. Boots of... That. And I'm out. No, I'm not. I'm getting stuck. Bye. 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 Okay. Arcane Fever. Is that a point? That's not what I mean. Nope. I was there. 5%? I thought it was 20%. Oh, no, no, no. It's less than 2, 5%. Okay. Okay. We're good. Yeah, we could just come up with these systems and, like, special ways of socketing things. And it just allow the player not only to learn maybe how to wear m better, like, as a, as a skill, sort of be capable of sustaining more. Uh, effects on your um, on your amulets just as a skill maybe add a skill for that or something like that or ma like magic item usage that can be a thing that is a thing in Dungeons and Dragons we got an ice claw which is amazing but also but also reward the players that do experimentation reward the players that I don't know if it, if it was for a, a weird socketing system uh, that, uh, that maybe maybe it says something in a book and you can kind of combine specific sockets. Like, ooh, that's, what is that? What? Oh no, that's a person, okay. That is a Marauder. Cool clothes though. Sorry, but you're kind of shooting at me even though I wasn't even, I wasn't even armed. So you're a scumbag. What, would I, what, I, I can't hear you over your bull crap. Also this, I can't hear you because the time is stopped. Is he attacking? It's Jesus. I was talking about it before. Was I? What was it? I said something about... I don't remember what it was. I think it was last episode, actually. Are you... Are, are you good? Yes, you are. Okay. What an interesting location. So these are marauders. But their clothes are different. They're desert clothes. They're not really. They're black. That's just terrible. Terrible desert clothes. I would guess. As far as I know, which is not much, but as far as I know, desert-dwelling people, or traditionally anyway, because, you know, if you live in the desert, but you live in a normal house and you have AC, then you can wear whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. Um, desert-dwelling people wear loose clothing so that there's a... There's, there's not heat soak under their clothing. But they do wear clothing to protect themselves from the heat. And it's always stuff like... why? Oh, the soul bad. Yeah, we're going. Uh, we're going in there. Let's first look around. I don't think there's anybody around anymore. But I'm kind of afraid of going in there because of all this arcane fever. What is that? It's a weird thing up there. Are we good? Yeah, I think we are. Um, And like... Light colors and all that sort of stuff. Very important. Because the sun beating on your skin is really bad. And to me, when I was a kid, when I learned about this, to me it was really weird. Because despite me complaining about when it gets really hot or when it gets really cold here, um, I live in a place that uh, we're fortunate enough to not actually have extreme temperatures. 
we rarely go below minus five centigrade degrees Celsius. I say centigrade, but Celsius. Uh, minus five, and uh, we rarely go above 37, 38. For Fahrenheit, that would probably be 98, uh, 90, 98, 100, uh, and uh, minus, that would be probably, the minus five Celsius would probably be 25, 20. Okay, lots of bad people here, which is great. Apart from the fact that they're all gonna try to kill me. Why do you have spells? And why do you have red eyes? What is this? Why? Why was he why was he special? They're all lost ones. I mean the sneak attacks are doing the work. And I am leveling up like a pro. And actually I need to go and learn some some traits and all that sort of stuff. What are uh, this sucks. What is up with you? Holy... He has lips? Oh, because it's sort of... Oh, it's not a skull then. I mean, it's half a skull. It's a weird thing. Okay, it's fine. Um, so yeah, I, I do complain about heat. Anything below 10 degrees Celsius is just too cold for me. And anything above 25 Celsius is too hot for me. I hate it. Still, when I go to the beach, which is not very often, but sometimes... Um, and when I went to the beach when I was a kid, I would just I would I would take shorts and that's that. Just skin, going about and just have skin out because that's how you keep cool because of breeze and because of water and all this sort of stuff. I hope there's no traps over here. So you can imagine my uh, six-year-old surprise. Oh, what is that? I don't know what to say here. This is good. Let's get some hits on this guy. It's probably gonna be the worst here. Uh, so you can imagine my surprise when I learned that Bedwins... In a book, anyway, so it might have been wrong. That's good. So what is that? That's an ancestral spirit. Ah, oh, we fought one of these. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. That used that sort of garments that I was describing before. And I was like, that can't be... That's not a thing. That, that's not how people go to the beach. The desert is like the beach, right? Mm. Children's books play, in my experience, play off a lot out of that sort of um, intuitive understanding of the world that kids have. And how you can shatter a kid's world by saying stuff like... The, like, I don't know... A, a, uh, well, oh, an, an ice one. I think I, I think I might have mentioned this before. When I was a kid, one of the read, that's an ice shield right there. Uh, one of the riddles, that's a Pyrian shield right there. So might have been really nice. Uh, one of the riddles that was posed to me, and I think it's posed throughout the world. So let's just maybe you know about this. It's broken. It's not going to activate that, or maybe it's a red herring. Do you see that? Do you see the? Do you see this? It's broken. Hmm. I'm gonna say it's a red herring, but I don't need to go there right now. Um, because I want to go over there. One of the riddles was... What is heavier? A, uh... Let's go with pounds, because I'm speaking English, and let's go with that. A pound of cotton... Or a pound of iron? And, uh... I heard it before I it was posed to me, so I knew the answer. I never failed that one. Well, it just so happens that I have, <laughs> actually, because the commonly accepted correct answer for that is actually wrong, in many, for many reasons. And I can explain to you. I can I can shatter your reality. So get ready for the boring. Uh, so basically, the the answer is no. They're the same weight, uh, so they're that has heavy. But there is actually a distinction between he uh, between weight, which is what you say is heavy or light, and mass, which is to say how massive something is. And a pound is a unit of mass, not a unit of weight. And that is counterintuitive, and people don't actually remember that, uh, but that is how it is. A unit of weight is um, is Newton. Uh, there's other, there's other, I'm pretty sure there's other 
uh, there's, there's, you probably have joules as well. Because Newton is an, is an energy me measure, and weight is energy. Which is counterintuitive, but it's because of the gravity and the way things work. Because if you are in space, let's say, you know, in outer space, you don't have weight. You literally don't have weight. You're weightless. Because there's no forces of gravity, or, I mean, very little, but still, there's always forces of gravity, but uh, there's no uh, actual, you know, gravity, practically speaking, to weigh you down or up or, any way, or anywhere you look. So you are weightless. You still conserve your mass, however. So this pounds, the pound of cotton in space is still a pound of cotton, just as a pound of, um, of iron is still a pound of iron. Now, it could be as simple as putting a magnet underneath the, bal or the, the scales and it, the pound of iron would be heavier because the magnetism also affects weight because the energy is increased and it does. But there's other thing, and, and we're, we're, we can't think of that like that, because it's a thought experiment. We're not going to say, oh, there's a magnet underneath. No, no, that's stupid. You need to think of, oh, it's just out over there, right? But there's other things that affect uh, weight. Buoyancy. Look it up. I'm not going to explain what it is, but it's basically the, the displacement of the air around you. Buoyancy is a thing. That's why a, um, that's why a helium balloon floats. It's got negative weight. Because the buoyancy applied to it by the air outside makes it float. The same is, uh, applies to the cotton. The cotton is bigger. The pound of cotton is like this big. Or maybe even bigger. I don't know how, uh, how um, heavy cotton is. But the pound of iron would be the size of, I don't know, a little bit of a cobble thing. So the buoyancy applied to the iron, the cotton would be bigger than the buoyancy applied to the iron. Other things as well. Uh, the... Um, the uh, let's go through here to the grave caves. I'm I'm such a rambler. I'm such a rambler. Oh my god. I'm unapologetically a rambler, except for the times I apologize for it. But I'm not apologizing for it right now. Uh, but uh, another thing that affects it is the weight of light. Oh, and the crashes that are coming. Yes, light has weight. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't have weight. It's it's it, it's literally massless. Actually, I don't know if it has because it it is affected by gravity. So it must have weight. Oh no, we have a fire elemental up there. Whom I'm shot. Uh, I've shot, I think. I have indeed. Oh, she's gonna be mad. Oh my god, she's blowing up. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, basically, if you look up solar sails, that's from Sol. It means the sun. Um... You'll, you'll find something amazing, actually. They're basically a spacecraft. I think it's not theorized. I think it's just... Uh, it's actually been built, something like that, and sent out into outer space. It's a space... I think. I don't know. I might, I might be wrong on that. But basically, oh, it's either a theory or it's actually been put to test. I hear things over here, and I don't like it. Is it you that's burning? Sorry, I had to kill you. Okay. Who burned these? An Aternaham helmet. I'll take it. Hi. What is this? Why can't I take these arrows? Hmm. Yeah, so basically, light can be used to, to push sails. They need to be very light, however, those sails. But in space, you could po potentially power, or not power, but I guess propel a spacecraft with sails that work off of light. Not solar winds, light. Which is kind of phenomenal. Kind of phenomenal. But it's got to do with the energy that protons... I'm not really sure how it works, because... Not protons, sorry, photons. Uh, because, I mean, photons are weightless. Are massless, I should say. That's why it's the whole EMC squared thingy. E equals MC squared, or whatever. Okay, that place is lovely. I am going there right uh, after this, but not right now. Uh, so, yeah, basically, the more surface area an object has the heavier it is. It's actually measurable. I've read somewhere, or I've heard somewhere, of the difference between... Oh, look at oh, fireballs. Do I need any of this for the moment? Not really. Of the difference between... Oh, a master thing. Let's go for this. Our weight. The difference between our weight when the lights are on, or in the, mid -sun, or in the midday sun, sun or something. And when in, in complete darkness, and it's measurable in grams, I think. Might be wrong about that, though. Or is it the way, the buoyancy that changes in grams? Hmm. 
Anyway, you'd need to weigh yourself in a vacuum to be able to measure that. It's pretty simple, Al although for the apart from the fact that you'd bulge up and sort of, sort of suffocate. Apart, I mean, sort of. I mean, you need to do, do it in a controlled environment, or not do it at all. That's my advice. Don't get yourself in a vacuum. That's probably terrible. I don't think you would explode though. There's a movie, and I don't think I've seen that movie. I think it's like Mission Impossible or something. There's a movie where they have a vacuum machine and uh, they increase the pressure. Let's see what I can do here. This is good. This is perfect. Oh, that one didn't die with a single shot. I thought the other one did. Okay, and there's those things. Oh. There it is. Yeah. Um, and they basically have a machine. They put somebody in there. They increase the pressure up to a bunch. Uh, There's actually a maximum we can withstand of pressure. Oh, crap. Um, and then they, re they quickly remove the air to a negative pressure, in, to inf and basically the person explodes. I'm not really sure if that's how it would work, though. I mean, they would die, but um, because they would be in a vacuum. And also, there's a there's other things it's like the there's a thing that happens when you're in um, when you're submerged. I think it's below 30 meters. If you go below 30 meters and you come back up for air, well, actually, if you go below 30 meters, you probably won't be able to hold the air. In your... will you? I think it, it needs pressurized air in your lungs at that point. I don't know. I don't know very well. Uh, I do know if you go below 30 meters in water uh, and then come back up, your heart will have problems. So you need to go back down again, sort of depressurize gradually. Uh, and if you just... yeah, it needs, it, it, you need to be careful of that. Um, I think it's below. I, I don't know. I don't know. There's another thing with pressurized air, though, which has got to do with the uh, density. Oh, look at where we are. The density of air and nitrogen, because that's how our breather works, I think, or whatever the machine is called. And uh, you get you get sort of drunk, I think, if uh, basically because of so much n nitrogen, a, a death. Not really sure, and that's why it's very it's very hard for um, for scuba divers to go below 100. Or actually, I think it's because it w that's the reason why it's impossible for scuba divers to. Um, let's shoot first. Okay. Uh, to go below 100 meters. Oh, the game is tired of my. Yeah, the game is done. No more scuba diving lessons. Seriously, not though. Because I have never, ever, even been inside a scuba diving suit. Is that fire elemental over there? Uh. Oh boy, this is dangerous. Okay, they're kind of weak. That's a kill. Who's making that noise? Oh. Oh, that was the fire elemental that was making the noise. We're good. We're safe. I think. This keeps going. This is a good dungeon. I like it a lot. You, Mr. Soil Elemental, give me all of your soil. Not you, though. This one. Yeah. So that's where we were. That's another place. Ooh. Tell me that... Tell me those aren't meant to kill. Tell me! Tell me those aren't meant to kill. Come on. You jerk. I didn't know. I don't even know what I stepped on. Interesting to see that he doesn't actually shoot up. Uh. Oh, I should have used that. Well, actually, I think I might have. A coconut. Hmm. Eterna arrows. Those are elven arrows. You don't fool me. I know what I'm talking about here. Let's see. Spell. Summon the elemental wolf. Yeah. Okay, so we're going down through here. Everything seems to be in order. Okay. 
And there's still more things that we haven't seen. I realized that. Ooh -hoo. That statue is really cool. Unless I can't really see it very well. Oh, there you are. Need to be careful here because they don't see me. But as soon as I shoot them, I mean, I'm really sneaking. Sneaking really well here. I think as soon as they see me, they come at me. They, um... They actually reveal me to, to their friends. So I don't get the sneak thing anymore. Oh, hi! Conjured Guardian! Who doesn't see me? Okay. That was the best decision of the whole episode. Fighting them over there. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, that was so good. I don't even know what I stepped on. I, felt like I think it was uh, a hidden trigger. Uh, and by a trigger, I mean a scripted trigger. That was... Proper. That was righteous. That was how you do that. And also how we end the episode, because we're out of time for the day. So, for right now, I'm Colonel RPG. And this has been Anderol. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.